Over the past few months, we've been focusing on what's next for Battlefield 2042. We've been taking this time to listen to you, our players, so we can focus on improving and evolving the game based on what we've heard. Our updates in this time have seen the arrival of features that weren't present at launch, as well as extensive improvements and fixes. We hope this shows you just how invested we are in this game. So, while we won't be revealing Season 1 today, that's for next month, we will be giving you an overview of what we're focusing on and what you should expect over the next few months and beyond for Battlefield 2042. Hey folks, I'm Freeman, Battlefield's Community Manager. I'm joined by Senior Producer Ryan MacArthur and Creative Director Lars Gustafsson. Um, let's start by talking about the main focus areas that we've identified uh, and the types of things we're looking to improve. Yeah, I mean, we spent a lot of time uh, taking feedback from the players, looking at the, the data we have in the game, and just looking at the game we intended to build. So we've got our maps. You know, how do we bring back those classic Battlefield experiences that allow players to sort of play the classic Battlefield they want? And that's with all the new maps we create, but also how do we address the challenges that we have with the existing maps that we launched the game with? Our game modes and experiences, how do we add variety? How do we add depth? How do we add differentiation across all of the modes in the game? The core gameplay, sort of that really tight through the gun experience. Obviously, there's been a lot of feedback around specialists, uh, gunplay, uh, you know, soldier movement, all of these things that sort of really make that tight battlefield experience that our players love. And obviously new content. When's new content coming? What type of content can players can expect? How does that new content need to change and adapt to the learnings we've got from our players and the feedback we've got from our players? Ryan, let's start with this first section of maps. What are the changes that players can expect to see? Um, and really, when are we expecting to actually bring them to the game? You're going to see the first of these changes with the launch of Season 1. So um, the Season 1 map, it's probably my most favorite. Uh, and Lars will tell me it's because I'm Canadian. But um, I, think, I think for me, I mean, this map is different from the other seven that we, we created at launch. It's got a ton of verticality. It's got good space for vehicle play. But it's also got those things that, that make a Battlefield map great. When you look at how this map plays, it's at the level we expect from ourselves as, uh, as game makers here. You know, on every map we make forward, moving forward with season uh, beyond season one, we start to apply these new these new standards we've set. But also, the team has done a real uh, a real deep dive into the maps we created for launch. Kaleidoscope is the first one we're going to see. So late in season one, you're going to see a uh, reintroduction of Kaleidoscope that sort of has uh, you know the the things that we see our players really craving at the moment. Let's take a look at that and have a look at some of the changes. On Kaleidoscope, we've revised areas across the entire level, adding more cover, creating new flank positions, and improving the flow across the whole map. Cover and terrain has been raised, and new forward operating bases have been added to increase close quarters combat. Not only that, but we've made sure more of the new assets that we've used on this map benefit from increased destruction, helping to change the battlefield more drastically throughout the rounds. Let me show you around the changes we've made. In the park, we've installed a forward operating base. Heavily fortified, this is great to defend and a challenge to attack. At the data center, we've increased the number of defense points, ensuring that when you're fighting here, you're fighting for every inch. Each entrance is now better protected and we've helped to improve line of sight breaks throughout the area. At the tower, you'll find the second command and control base. In breakthrough, this is a crucial flag with a much clearer front line and more cover for attackers to use in their advance. Over at the park, we've ripped out the walkways and created more cover. You'll find that the infantry experience has improved here, adding a giant tree and making the gazebo smaller to create a stronger defensive layout. And now, while a little earlier in the process, let's take a look at Renewal and how it is that'll play when it arrives in Season 2. Like with Kaleidoscope, the whole map has been reviewed with the intent set on improving the infantry and CQC experience. Flags are much closer, with out-of-the-way sectors cut entirely from the battlefield to improve the flow of combat. There's all new assets deployed across the map with improved destruction and much more of a battlefield feeling than we had at launch. Over at the solar station, we've revised the area to include much more cover, huge concrete barriers, sandbag walls, and shipping containers, saving the warehouses as the best place to take shelter from the aerial assault. Out in the desert, we've reworked the terrain to help create clear paths for infantry and vehicles. There's improved line of sight blockers that let you move with more purpose between the flags, and help to better direct the action into clearer front lines. The battery farm has been simplified, reducing the number of possible angles of attack and increasing cover where it's needed most. Up ahead at the checkpoint, we fortified the farm side, allowing attackers to move more strategically in their advance, with vehicles providing your best method of attack. Just watch out for the traps defenders will place in wait. At the Sonesco building, expect a lot more fortification and cover that will need an overwhelming display of force to assault. The interiors have been reworked with new storage areas that give plenty of cover for defenders 
and improve the close quarters combat action once you get inside. Corridors are full of more line of sight blockers, making them viable defense points, including new lines of sandbags across the windows. We're hard at work on more improvements to renewal and we'll have more to show about the changes we're making here when these updates land in season two. Let's talk about our next big focus, which is game modes and experience. What are the types of changes we're looking to bring here? It's two key things. One of them is about, uh, you know, variety and depth of what you play. And the other part is more around the available options to give you a better understanding of what you're getting yourself into. And in order to get this, uh, you know, experience the best possible, we've decided to kind of unshackle ourselves from the 128 players mantra that we had for this game. 128 players will still be there, and it's great for some modes, but not everywhere. So we will redirect our focus, build for fun, for freedom, for creativity at all points. That being the case then, talk to me some more about the types of changes that we're going to be bringing specifically. Um, let's start with all that warfare, and let's talk about conquest. What improvements are we looking to bring here to the game mode? So for all that warfare and conquest, 128 players is definitely a thing. What I'm saying is that for the coming maps, we will scale them down compared to the launch maps to give much more focus in the experience. This might mean that, you know, there will be fewer sectors, we have maybe fewer capture points, but ultimately we want to ensure that your conquest experience have kind of intense combat areas. And above all for me is those times when you feel that you're getting shot at from all directions by the enemy to help you get in control, and we can do this through design. Okay, so if that's going to be conquest, what about breakthrough? What changes are we making here? I love breakthrough, I've always done, and it's that immersive frontline experience. And in the light of the 128 player discussion here, in order to retain you know, the promise that it comes with of outsmarting your opponents, we have taken an active decision now to move permanently to 64 players to gain a better gameplay experience. Let's focus on fun, uh, let's focus on capturing what it's all about and enabling our players on the battlefield. You know, we can take all of the knowledge we have in this house when it comes to Battle V1, Battle V5 in building breakthrough in great ways for 64 players. Let's talk a little bit about Hazard Zone. What's our future here? I'm the first to acknowledge, you know, high hopes. Uh, we set out on a path, but we haven't gained the traction we wanted with this mode. You can still find it in the mode selection screen. But for the maps that are coming in the seasons, we won't put it as a focus. When we look at where our players are today, it means that we can pour our love and resources into the all at warfare experience where we can focus on additional tools for even more fun. So we've covered our plans for maps, we've covered our plans for game modes and experiences. Next, we want to talk about core gameplay. Um, and there's a lot to unpack here, so do stick with us. Obviously, there's a big change uh, on a big area that we want to address today, and that's specialists. Yeah, and I mean, I think, you know, we've talked about this a lot. I think, you know, this isn't the easiest topic, but I think that the key for us is that we've heard you. And I think, you know, when we look at this, the feedback we're getting, I mean, th these have both been polarizing, but they've also been confusing. There's that sort of disconnect between the quips you hear from these, these specialists, and they don't quite fit, and they break the immersion for players, which has always been core to Battlefield. They're too pristine, right? So we need to, you know, they need to be dirty, they need to be gritty. How do we fit that in? Um, so what you're going to see uh, in the specialists is improved VO. It kind of really fits them in the world. Body postures to sort of make them sort of fit in that Battlefield character that we're trying to create. You know, when it comes to we're bringing these changes and improvements to the gameplay side of our specialists, I mean, this is something the team is still very focused on. Uh, we're just not yet in a space where we can share the final plan. You know, as we shared earlier this year, you know, we set out on the task of finding ways to better mess these into our core gameplay loops, you know, better communicating how these fit into the class structure of 2042, which was always our intent. The things that are stopping us from moving, you know, doing these changes sooner is to making sure that we can still deliver the key content that our players need and, and, and address all the other changes that, that you need to make. We know that what we have in the game today can be improved. You know, we've taken the expectations that our players have and they've shared with us, you know, and we want to make sure that we can deliver on that at the best possible quality. I mean, we're not walking away from specialists. They're a key part of 2042, but we need to make sure we get it right and we can deliver to our players what they deserve. Now on to gunplay. Naturally, you'll have seen loads of updates and improvements that we've helped to bring to the game over the last few months, but particularly with our most recent update last month. Um, but there's some longer term plans too. Um, Lars, do you want to talk us through them? Definitely. You'll see more vehicles, weapons, gadgets. While this is happening, uh, we'll have a continuous focus on the balance of our weapons across the board. 
Well, we do have our new, the plus menu, you know, attachment system. Uh, I mean, that one definitely helps you to, to take each weapon and give unique uh, playstyles within it. We have also started an initiative where we are cherry picking uh, a number of classic weapons from uh, Portal to be able to rework these to be brought into the all out warfare. So more weapons up to the standards across the board. Weapons, guns, do I need to say more? <laughs> I don't think he does. Um, next, we're going to speak about movement and the polishing updates that we're helping to bring to the game here. Um, in July, as part of Season 1, we've got some big updates coming to how our traversal kind of works. Um, so let's take a quick look at that. Our goal is to improve the readability of body motions in third person and making our soldier animations look more alive and believable. A great example of this is disconnecting the aiming from turning. When aiming around, the soldier can now rotate his upper body separately from the lower body until they get to an uncomfortable position, which causes the lower body to reposition in a more natural and comfortable manner. Another example of this includes several improvements to changing directions when either running around or sprinting. Portions of the body can now lean towards the direction of the movement, which makes for nicer looking animations, as well as more natural and predictable movements. We're looking forward to showing more of what we have in store in the future updates. Uh, playing together and staying easily with squads is, of course, vital to anyone playing Battlefield. And so getting team play where it needs to be, um, that is something that we're working on. What have we got planned, Ryan? The team is looking quite heavily at how we can pull those things together. How do I make building a squad easier? Um, how do I make sure I can find my friends and play with, be that, you know, on the same platform or cross-platform? You'll start to see the first pass in Season 1 with some of this, the UI improvements, and, and those are going to continue as we try and make the UI more understandable, more accessible for both finding modes, finding players, and staying together. Okay, our next topic then is something we know we need to talk to you guys about, and that's performance. I uh, appreciate we're going to be speaking pretty directly to our PC players here today. Uh, but since launch, this has been a pretty big focus for our technology teams. Um, we know performance has been an issue for many of you, our players, um, with the game dropping below our own expectations and certainly your expectations when it comes to playing the game on recommended and high-spec machines. Um, Ryan, do you want to speak a bit more to this? Well, I wish this was something that you could just, you know, fix a thing and we're good and we're done. And it's just, just unfortunately, you know, this is going to be that ongoing battle that we have. But the good thing is this team is committed to it. Um, and the great thing is we see with, with um, 0.4, we started to see uh, you know, some of those, those big uh, CPU spikes. We, we made a big dent in those. We're seeing better latency. Uh, trigger responsiveness is getting back to where they expected to be, and we're seeing an improvement in frame rate. And we're going to keep pushing and, and, and get more of that sorted as we head into Season 1 as well. Okay, finally then, to cover our upcoming content, Lars, where are we at with that? Next month, with the launch of Season 1, yeah, it really is going to mark you know, the, the start of a year of delivery. Four seasons, four new specialists, new exotic locations for you to play on, and tons of new gameplay content. All of these seasons will then come with their own battle pass for you, that extra push, something to achieve. All of us in this building are here, uh, ultimately, to ensure that you're out there on the battlefield, playing together, having fun, finding new ways to outsmart each other, and in order to do that and keep you going, uh, we are committing to you know, more weekly missions, uh, to new featured experiences, to new community spotlights, more, to keep us all happy and going on the battlefield. So that's our four areas of focus for the future of Battlefield 2042, which I'll help to summarise here before we hear from Ryan one final time. Maps, we're making sure that we're reworking both our existing maps, starting with Kaleidoscope as part of Season 1, to help address some of the issues and frustrations that I know we've talked a lot about over the last few months. Um, experiences and game modes, we are unshackling ourselves from 128 players. Um, you'll still experience it in Conquest, but do expect to see that with Breakthrough, we're moving down to 64 players. Um, so that we can help to really drive the focus into the fun that we have in Battlefield 2042. With core gameplay, there is a lot to unpack here, starting with specialists, but also the improvements that we still have coming to gunplay, to team play, to UI and UX stuff that you can read about over on the Battlefield website. And then finally, new content. It's coming soon. We have our new season starting next month, and that is going to kickstart a whole new year of us bringing new things onto the Battlefield. Now, we'll keep updating you on our areas of focus uh, throughout the year, and you'll hear again from me next month when we come back to talk about the new season with members of the Battlefield team. Um, but before we go, um, we want to hear from Ryan one last time, because I know you wanted to talk to the players directly. Yeah, thanks, Adam. Um, I mean, Lars and I are here today, and we're really grateful to be able to represent the entire Battlefield team and reaffirm our commitment to Battlefield 2042. The team has made a ton of updates to this game, 
but we know it's not enough and we know we need to keep doing more. Uh, so on behalf of the team at Ripple Effect, EA Gothenburg, our new studio in Seattle, DICE, and all of the battlefielders across EA, we just want you to know that we are here. So thank you, thank you for sticking with us. Uh, and to steal a line from my good friend Lars here, we'll see you on the battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> For more, head over to the Battlefield website uh, and we'll see you next time, folks. Bye-bye.